Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 119 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, I'm going to give you some tips on how you may more effectively add a vignette to your image. Now, you probably know if you're in the develop module and you want to add a vignette, you'd go to the effects tab over here on the right hand panel. And the first thing you're presented with way up there at the top is something called style. And there's three styles highlight and color priorities and paint overlay. Well, what do these mean? Well, to demonstrate, I'm going to temporarily take this amount slider and just move it all the way to the left so we get a dark vignette. And highlight priority, what that does is it will darken the highlights first, followed by the midtones, and then finally the shadows. This tends to be the most natural looking vignette for an image and the least noticeable. Typically you don't want your vignette maybe noticed. You just want it to try to help draw the viewer's attention more towards the middle of the image. So the highlight priority does a really nice job of doing that. The problem with highlight priority at times though is it will shift colors, particularly at darker pixels. So if I had something very dark but colorful on the outside of the image, it may shift the color. If it does, you may prefer to use color priority. And with color priority, it just really does a less heavy vignette, I guess for lack of a better term, but it doesn't or it tends to not shift the colors. And you can see the differences. The highlight priority vignette is much heavier than the color priority vignette. But again, if you find that your vignette is shifting color, you may prefer to do that color priority. One thing you'll notice with both of these first two styles that this highlights slider is active. And what that is, is if you have something very bright on the outside of the image, it may not look natural for it to have a vignette. This most often might be with a sunset or a sun, with the suns in the image or the moons in the image. And if you add a vignette, it will darken part of the sun or part of the moon and that might not look natural. So with either again of these two styles, highlight or color, you could come in with this highlight slider and move it to the right. And as I do that, you could see at the top, those clouds are starting to come back in. So it's removing the vignette from those highlights up there. So you'll find that is an effective tool to use. Now, the last style is called paint overlay and with that style you see the highlight slider is grayed out we can't use it all paint overlay is it darkens all the pixels evenly or lightens all the pixels evenly if you chose to use a light vignette it's as though you took a brush took exposure either up or down and just brushed around the outside of the image it tends to be the least natural looking of these different vignette styles but in some instances, it might be a better choice. So you're good. It's nice to experiment with these different types of styles and see what's what works best for your image. Now, for this specific image, I may and I typically don't like to put lighter vignettes on. I like to put darker vignettes on, and I like to put them not on very heavy-handed. So meaning, I don't go too dark. I I just put a slight one on. But when doing that, it's barely noticeable. And if I want to adjust midpoint, roundness, and feather, I sometimes can't really tell what that slider is doing. So what you could do is apply your vignette amount as you normally would. And let's say for this image, it's going to be minus like 20. I'll adjust the midpoint, but when I click down on the midpoint slider, I'll hold in the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC, Option if you have a Mac. And when you do that, it will temporarily max out your amount slider. If you apply a dark vignette, it will max it out dark. If you apply a light vignette, it will max it out light. And you could better see what you're doing with these sliders. So the midpoint I could bring in or out, appropriate, you know, for appropriate for this image. Similarly, I'll hold that ultra option key in and adjust roundness. I can make it perfectly round or more rectangular. And I'll keep that alter option key pressed in. And for feathering, I could feather the vignette more, or I could make it very sharp or abrupt and, you know, get a nice amount of feathering like I think it should have. And the highlights that are also will work with the alter option key in the similar in the same way. So you could bring back some of those highlights. So 
just again holding that alter option key and that works with all the different uh, overlays so it'll max them out or all the different styles I should say and that will work fine so that might help you better apply a vignette to your image or more effectively apply a vignette to your image that's it for this episode. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. If you guys could do me a favor, all my videos are free and they're free because many people help me out. They buy my Photoshop actions or my Lightroom presets or they're my Patreon or they make donations or they use one of my affiliate links and buy some products using those links where I make a small commission. If you'd like some information on how you could help me really improve my videos, and keep making free videos. If you look in the top right hand corner of this video, you'll see the letter I. Click on that I and you'll get more info on how you could help me. Thank you again, everyone. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.